Okay, uh, good morning. It is 7 o'clock in the morning here in Mercer Locomotive. I got here at uh, about 5.30 and uh, I'm here to do some casting today and follow up on uh, what I've accomplished so far with this project. And I'll tell you what, it's been really working out well. Uh, a little bit shaky at first. Um, I never had any problem really making pouring the metal, but uh, I had a lot of problem with this burnout ovens here. And this is the oven that you've seen me use maybe on the, uh, the powder coat. And I got this for a powder coat oven. This was, I got this at Lowe's. It was, a, it was a, an older model, and they sold it to me for 75 bucks. Brand new almost. And this is the kiln. It's a Paragon kiln that I've had some problems with. Now, the problems I've had, when I first put the molds in there, first time I poured or cast, well, first of all, I hooked up the pit, as you saw in one of the videos, and then I put the, um, I brought it out here, and I plugged it in up here, and I turned it on, and it's going along real good, and molds are burning out, making a lot of smoke and all that, and um, I got up to about 1,000 degrees. It's supposed to go another 350. I'm supposed to hold and all this stuff. All of a sudden, it's smoking like crazy. Actually, when I open that door, poof, it started on fire. Well, that's the wax in there. Now, I was removing the wax. I had um, these metal things here I got from the dollar store to catch the wax, but you know what? It's a real pain in the neck. So, I couldn't understand why the coils were burning out. And, um, I talked to Paragon and I explained to them the situation and they said, well, when the smoke of the wax gets on the coils, it makes an insulation there and then it makes more resistance for the power to go through it. And that made a lot of sense. Furthermore, there was another issue back there. I don't know if you can see it back behind here is where the power is. I had someone hook it up, a friend of mine, and... Uh, he was hooking it up and he forgot to tighten up one of the one of the terminals and I got like almost a 360 degree turn out of the terminals and that could have been some of the problem too because the terminals have to be really tight to get good good um, connection to the power so that might have been the problem but uh, what I also what I did and you can't see it here probably in the video but uh, I'll put it up in a picture I guess behind there in the back, the coils go around like this, okay? And behind there, I put in a piece of asbestos sheet. Now, where did you get that? Well, about 50 years ago, 45 years ago, you could buy it. And I bought a big sheet of it, and I cut it all up. And uh, I used that for uh, making a, my father, when I was down in the basement where I live, actually live there now. But um, he was concerned that I was going to burn the house down, so I built a a booth there to use my torch in to make it safe. Well, I don't need that anymore. I got the video, I got the, uh, the, the uh, asbestos out of there and I have a sheet. So, so you know what? I'm going to put a sheet there and put it behind the coils, in front of the coils, behind in the back of the, back of the oven, kiln, to protect those coils back there. Okay. But then I said, wait a minute, you know what? I noticed that on some of these videos, they uh, get the wax out in a different method. And some of the method they use is steam. And I was going to try steam. And they have what's called an autoclave, which is steam and it burns out, the, or melts the wax out. But I wanted to go one step further and I'll use this thing. And what I'm going to do here is that the first time I tried it, I started it out at three, preheated the oven. Started out at 350, and after about two hours, I jacked it up to 400, and then after about another hour after that, I jacked it up to five, 450, and I put it in there. The, the mold stay in here for four hours. I'm going to open that up in a minute and show you. And in the meantime, about a half an hour prior to taking the molds out of here and putting them in there, I preheat that oven to 550. Now you say, well, well, it's 450, 550. Well, when I open that furnace up, that heat's going to go out, right? So I take the molds from here, and by the time I put it in there, it dropped down to 400, 
and then it slowly ramps up over a five minute period to about 500 and then it starts working that way. All right, then from 550, this oven now, over four hours is going to go up to 1350. We got the pin set for that. And after four hours, a 1350, uh, raising to 1350, it holds at 1350 for two more hours. So it's four hours, two hours, or six hours. You got four, four hours here, which makes it 10 hours. Then for an additional hour, it's going to come down to 800. It's going to ramp down to 800, and it's going to put it on hold there at 800. And then I get the furnace out here, and we start, you know, the melting furnace, which is underneath there. You can just see it, I guess. And uh, we start what start the furnace here, and we melt out melt the metal, and we get the the chambers over here on the floor. Here's the the second vacuum chamber. First one got stolen right out of the back here, and uh, I got I made another ring for five inch molds. So I have five inch molds now. So this is five inches across here, and I found out something interesting at that temperature. I made it about. Oh, I don't know, 30, 40 thousands bigger through the hole here, but expand it that much. So now I got a good amount here. It's going to uh, not hang up when I put it in there. But anyway, so I'm going to open this up now. You see, I got the fan up there. The fan is to blow the smoke out the door right here and blow it out into the neighborhood. It's just smoke. It's, it smells like wax. Nobody can complain about it because around here, come. Uh, some holiday or on the weekends and stuff, people are out here barbecuing and making all kinds of, they're cooking chicken and ribs and whatever the hell they're cooking, and uh, they're making uh, they're making smoke anyway. So, uh, uh, so what? Anyway, here I'm going to open it up, I, I, and you'll see the smoke come out. It just blows right out the door there. Now you can see the molds. I'll open it up all the way. You can see the molds in there, and I got a, a lasagna pan down there that I got from the dollar store to catch the wax. Now after a while I take the wax and I pour it out and I change the, the pans. I got other pans back here because that's what's making the smoke. It's the wax burning. Then what, after a while, this is a, this is a brand new pan here. And then after a while, it's been in there for a while, it actually burns in there. So when it does that, then I know that pretty much all the wax is out of it. And uh, that was the problem, and I've solved the problem now, I think. So um, the casting setup, I, this is going to be my probably around sixth or seventh cast so far. And uh, once I get the confidence in the ovens here, uh, I'm going to see if, I, if there's some way I'm sure that you can time that so it starts at a given point. Put the molds in there, have it all set up and start it, instead of me having to get here at 5.30 in the morning, I can get here maybe at 8 o'clock in the morning, so I'll go about two, three hours on this thing here. And uh, I don't know, see it really doesn't smoke unless you open it up. So I, I have to look and in, look into that, but uh, I really don't trust these furnaces without somebody being here. But um, I'm quite pleased with the way the casting setup's going on. Now I, I can see some major, major potentials major potentials uh, with this casting setup. Uh, it just seems now, now I've, I've lost, I've, I've gained the control over my products. Now, I watch a lot of documentaries. Uh, I enjoy watching old documentaries and stuff. And one of the ones I watched was from Henry Ford about him, the Model T and what he did. It was a, it's a good, I think, a couple of hours. And it's on YouTube by the way. And that's what I watch a lot of YouTube. There's plenty of stuff on YouTube free. I don't have no more cable. I cut the cord, man. And I got what's called a Roku box. So I recommend a Roku box to everyone. Cost you $99. You hook it up. You got to have a computer. Most people have them anyway. And it's online. Either, either you can hook it up with an HDMI cable or you can do it wireless. And uh, I see a lot of documentaries about airplanes, World War II, tanks, I like all that kind of stuff. I don't want to watch this mindless show. So anyway, enough of that. Um, the, the, the Henry Ford thing, when he was building his Model T, he built with the Rouge River plant, and it was like about 350 acres. 
and he, he, he had a he made his own steel. He made his own glass for the for the thing. He, he basically had all of everything there. He built, and some of the uh, he had a, he had a, a lumber, like a, acres and acres of lumber that he would take get his own lumber for the wheels because the wheels were, the, they were spoke like wagon wheels. They were wood, and uh, he he made the lumber for that and some other wood that was in the car, and. Uh, he made his own steel, made his own steel sheets, he made his own castings, he made the, the, the engine, he just made just about everything. He made the own, his own tires, and one of the points that he did was he went down to South America and he bought some acreage down there, a lot of acres, thousands I think, and he called the place Fordlandia, and he had this vision that he was going to get the rubber from there to make his tires. But that didn't work out. I think he had cahoots with Harry Firestone because Harry Firestone was related to him in some way. But anyway, he controlled the entire product at the Rouge River plant. So I said to myself, you know, that's the secret. You got to control everything yourself. You, I mean, it's a lot more work. And, uh, you know, but I, here I am, I'm doing casting, and then I take off my hat, and then I'm machining, and then I take off my hat, and I'm the boss, and I'm, you know. So... Maybe once in a while you get someone to help you part-time to, to shoot the waxes and do other stuff. But for the most part, things are working out pretty good for me now. I'm trying to get some stock. And uh, next year, starting in April, I didn't start this till, till August to make casting. So starting in April next year, through the summer, I'm going to be casting. And uh, I got over 50 safety valve bodies done now and, and you know no big deal I made some more I, I built I made 40 machined and made 40 uh, starter valves which are gone I got one or two left and I've got another nine to put together and then I've got another 30 castings to machine and while I got this machine set up back there the chucker I'm going to machine them up well, I still got the tools in there from the last batch, and the DSMA, which is on this side, I still have it set up to make the spindles. So I'm going to start making the spindles, and then I'm going to go and make some other parts and get these two, two machines cooking here. But um, and I want to get the safety valve started up, and hopefully be close. But I won't be doing it at least out here in the snow like I did in the last three or four times, because all because of the foundries. Order castings, and I get the castings way longer than what they tell you. So, that's where I've been, and uh, it's been working out pretty good with the casting so far. I've used probably $100 worth of propane. I've uh, burned out one crucible, and I'll get it and show you. I save it. I burned out the one crucible. And uh, David Flowers told me if it, see, it sounds like tunk, tunk, clunk, clunk. Well, it's got a crack in it. Big crack right over here. Big crack right here. So, you can see it actually moving there. Anyway, that's uh, it for this. That, uh, these cost 35 bucks. So I bought two this time. I cured one. You have to cure them. I cured one, and I've got the other one partially cured because I put them in the oven here at 200 degrees for about three hours just to kind of dry them out. And then I put them in a furnace and dr bring them up to cherry red. And the cherry red, I let them cool in there, and then that, that worked. So this one here is just like, I'm going to keep this for nostalgia. My first one. And uh, I got some plans for this stuff. I mean, uh, I could see me start going into a little foundry work here. And uh, maybe doing some sand casting next year. Maybe aluminum, bronze. I doubt if I'll ever do iron. I, I, I work at the Cattail Foundry, which works out for me. So that's it. Uh, we're here casting today. Today is uh, 20th of September. 2015. And uh
getting near the time where we're going to stop running the K4. I ran yesterday, ran beautifully. And I'll probably run one or possibly two more times this year, and that's the end of the story. So, thanks for watching all the videos on the, on the casting setup. I hope it's been helpful to you. And uh, we'll see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching.